have question uh, number eight from C12, C12, January 2014, IAL. Um, question asked by one of my students. I'm going to answer it right now. Let's find the range of values of k for which this quadratic equation has no real roots. Now, a quadratic equation is in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, where a, b, and c are constants. Okay? So the k here and the k, they're, they're constants. Now, um, as I mentioned before, um, the discriminant, okay, of a um, quadratic equation is what tells us how many roots we have. Okay, the discriminant. And the discriminant is given by the part of the quadratic formula, like the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared, minus 4ac all over 2a. That's a quadratic formula. And the discriminant is the part underneath the square root sign. That's what helps us to find out how many solutions we're going to have in a quadratic equation. So if the dis discriminant, if the discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, if it's a positive number, if it's greater than 0, okay, then you're going to have two solutions. You have minus b plus or minus something over 2a. So you'll have two separate solutions. Minus b plus that over 2a and minus b minus that over 2a. If it's equal to zero, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, then there will be, this will be, you have two real solutions, which will be distinct, you can say. Okay? If b squared minus 4ac equals zero, that means you're going to have minus b plus or minus zero. The square root of zero is zero, right? So minus b over 2a, there will be just one solution, one solution, or you can say two repeated roots, they called repeated roots. So it's basically one solution repeated twice. Then you've got b squared minus 4ac. If it's negative, if it's less than zero, of course you get the square root of a negative number. It's undefined. So here you'll have no real solutions. No real solutions. Okay? So they're telling us for which it has no real roots, no real solutions. Roots and solutions mean the same thing, basically. So we know that b squared minus 4ac has to be less than zero, has to be a negative number. So if we look at our equation here, our a is k. The coefficient of x squared is, a k, is, a, is the a. Our b is 8. It's the coefficient of x. And our c is 2 times k plus 7. So now if we just set this up now, b squared is 8 squared minus 4 times k times 2 k plus 14. I'll just simplify that. It's 2k plus 14. And that has to be less than 0. So you have 64 minus, and you're going to have 4 times k times 2k. Um, so that's 4k times 2k. That's 8k squared. And you're going to have minus 4 times 14. Well, that's 40 plus 1656 is less than 0. So now we have a, a negative 8k squared. So you've got to be careful. A negative 8k squared um, and you're going to have minus 56k, by the way, minus 4k times 14. You're going to have minus 56k, and you're going to have plus 64 is less than zero. Okay, so now that's the inequality we have to solve. Okay, so now what we can do here is we can, we don't like the k squared to be a negative term, so we can do two things. We can divide by negative 8, that gets rid of the factor, and it also gets rid of this being a, a negative. But when we multiply or divide by a negative number, we must change the sign of the inequality. So you're going to get k squared minus or plus 7k minus 64. When you divide by minus 8, that becomes positive, that becomes positive, that becomes negative, and that becomes 8, by the way, not 64. 64 divided by 8, okay, is 8. Okay, so now we have k squared plus 7k minus 8 is less, is greater than 0. We want to solve this inequality. To solve this inequality, we need to find first the critical values. So first we're going to find out where it equals 0. So k squared plus 7k plus, uh, minus 8 is equal to 0. That's what we have to find out first. Okay, this factorizes. Okay, you see you're going to have one is positive, one is negative. You see it's going to be 8 and minus 1. So k plus 8 is 0, so k is negative 8, and k minus 1 is 0, so k is positive 1. So if we make a little sketch, 
we know that it passes through the x-axis at minus 8 and at 1 okay and we know that it opens upwards like this so we want to know when this is greater than 0 when it's greater than 0 so when it's above the k axis okay above the, the k it's like the k axis or the x axis when is it above the k axis when k is less than minus 8 and k is greater than 1 and those are the solutions to this problem when k is less than minus 8 and when k is greater than 1 okay so those are the solutions those are the range of values of k for which this has no solution okay so that's question number 8 answered for you so you've got to be careful when you um, the main thing here when you dividing by minus 8 you must change the direction of the inequality sign okay so at this stage when I divide by minus 8 you see the next line the, cha the sign changes direction when you multiply but divide by a negative number the inequality sign must change its direction okay and that's the answer to this question and thank you for watching for watching